about somebody. Okay. Oh, uh, not much, man. Uh, what, did you hear me say anything? Um, oh, no, I just heard you were a big Trump supporter. I just wanted to talk. I was curious why. Wait, who said I was a big Trump supporter? Not a big Trump supporter, but yeah, I think you said in that clip that you had good reasons for voting for Trump. I had my reasons for voting for Trump. Well, I would assume you'd think your own reasons are good reasons, um, no? Oh, no, just a minute. Yeah, let me go ahead and move my character real quick. Yeah, um, well, anyway, uh, what, do you want me to like give you my reasons or what? Yeah, I was just curious. Well, uh, one of the reasons is I thought he was a better candidate than Hillary Clinton. Like, that's basically what it comes down to. Better in what regard? Um, I thought that he was better in terms of being more, uh, I guess, like a little bit more trustworthy. And also at the same time, probably I, I knew what I was getting myself into more with him than I was with Hillary Clinton. Does that make sense? No, because Hillary Clinton has like 30 years of office experience. So you kind of know exactly what you're getting with her. How do you feel like you'd know more with what you're getting with Trump, who's never been in office before? Because he, because he didn't say he had a public and a private position for different issues. Do you understand what her... What? Uh, what, do you know what the context of that statement was with the public-private position thing? I'm assuming that you do, so explain it. The, the context of the statement was that sometimes there are things that you want to work towards. There are ultimate goals that you want to work towards, but you can't necessarily state them publicly, so you kind of move towards them in, in, in other ways. Um, I think she mentioned with, um, I, I think it was in the context they were talking about Abraham Lincoln, and she was saying, like, if Abraham Lincoln had just come out and said, I wanted to free the slaves, that that would have never worked, that he had to kind of, that, that politics is a sort of game that you have to navigate through. You've got to make deals with people. You have to kind of move in a direction to get your agenda done, right? Well, I think everybody agrees, like having different, like moving towards different goals and in increments is better. Then you don't but disagree that, with Hillary said. No, I'm saying that if you're saying something to the public and you want to do one thing and then you turn around and you do something else, that's different than moving towards something incrementally on like a political level. Not really. That was exactly the point she made. Trump actually makes the exact same point in his book, The Art of the Deal, when he says that when you offer something as your first offer, it's not a real first offer. You usually do it as a position to negotiate out of. So Trump yeah, would have yeah. a public uh, I think and private position as well. Yeah, so then you don't really disagree with anything Hillary said. Well, of course I do. Uh, like having a public and private position is a lot different than negotiating something and it's one of them can be completely different and the other one is probably like just another version of uh what do you call it uh of what you originally wanted like if you have a public and private position like your public position can be like i don't want to have a war and your private position could be i do want to have a war okay that, that's not the different. context of that statement at all though the statement had to do with moving like here, this would be more akin to the statement that she was making let's say that your private position is you think that single payer is the best option for the united states your right. public position might not be we're going single payer health care might be we're going to push health care reform in a way where the government helps as many people as possible but do you understand outlet. the point that i was trying to make yeah but i think that you're I think it's ridiculous. Can, can you give me a what? single? Can you give me a single public-private position that Hillary Clinton has that where one totally contradicts the other? Well, how am I supposed to know all of her private positions? I don't know because email leaks happen because you've seen her in office for thirty years. Do you think she has some covert secret agenda that she just hasn't revealed for thirty years? She's been waiting this whole time to become the president to reveal it. I, I didn't say that. I'm just saying, like, of course, I don't know like what all of her private positions are because they're private. But obviously it was a problem because she was saying that, and then she has all of the speeches like not taped. Don't you think that's uh, a little bit confusing? I mean, when the speeches were leaked fr from her, from some of the transcripts and some of the speeches she gave, there wasn't anything bad in there. I mean, I don't know. I, they don't tape speeches. I didn't I think... say they weren't bad. I said they she didn't want them recorded, even if they're not bad. There's doesn't isn't like a little bit confusing if you're going to be like a political candidate and you don't want your speeches recorded. I mean, I don't know if if you're being paid to give private speeches somewhere. I don't, I don't know whether or not. I mean, does Trump have every speech that he's ever made recorded? I don't know. It just seems like a weird thing to get hung up on. It, it, it's not about having them recorded. It's about not letting other people record them. Uh, not doing something is different than not allowing it. I guess I would have to know the context of the speech. If you're giving a paid speech at a convention somewhere, that might be against the policy of the people giving the speeches. I don't know if you charge a lot for a speech, you might not want people recording it and handing it out. I'm not sure. I would have to see the specific thing well, that you think... didn't want recorded. And I think the context does make a lot of sense, but uh, if you're talking to like people that you're giving a lot of money to, and or, or giving a lot of money to you, uh, I think it would kind of make sense that, especially as a political candidate, uh, I think the public should uh, want to know what she says. Does that make sense? Uh, yeah, and and I guess, disallowing I mean... it is, is I, I think it's disingenuous and um, deceptive. Okay, even though she gives tons of speeches publicly, gave all of her positions on the debate, had a, on multiple debates with Trump and Bernie and O'Malley, and has a website published with all of her positions, and has been in public service for 20 or 30 years, 
because she gave some speeches that were paid for that she didn't want recorded, that means that everything else means nothing? It's a really strange position. Well, um, if you go to the store every single day and you buy for things, and then you go to the store once and you steal something, like that still means that you're stealing something. It still means you're doing something bad. So this, Just is, because a, you're, this is a bad analogy right. because you're assuming that giving okay. a speech that's not recorded is somehow a moral wrong. We're, we're stealing will uh, always be... I do be... feel like it's a moral wrong. So you've uh, never in, said anything in private in your entire life that you don't want recorded or, or put out there, ever. Uh, I think that whenever you're giving it, I think it depends, again, like what you said with the context. I think with the context that you're talking about having a person that is, uh, you know, they're a public servant in a way, and they want people to vote on them, and then there are people that are giving them money, and then they're telling those people that are giving them money privately different things. Uh, but know, she wasn't really telling position. them different things. That's why. That's why when those speeches were leaked, not, there were no shockers that came out of there. There, there was. Uh, the, that, I'm that, not saying that they were. I'm just saying that the idea of it is uh, it, it's deceptive, and it would. I mean, wouldn't that make you worry? Like, I mean, not no. That would, people. So you're no. saying that politicians should never be allowed to give private speeches like or, i don't even know if she was I, involved when she I gave these like, speeches yeah maybe i mean i think if there are people that are large donors and you're giving a speech to those people i think yeah maybe it shouldn't be it should be against law to have that like not recorded yeah i mean okay i, I gotcha. think that seems okay well i guess this is just something we disagree on it's not against the law okay. it's totally legal in the united states um so i guess aside from well, i'm not yeah i'm not saying that it's against the law i'm not saying that hillary I'm not a big lock her up kind of guy or anything like that. Uh, I'm saying that it's deceptive and it makes me question people's motives whenever they do that. And I think uh, everybody would feel that way, or at least a lot of people did uh, with the election. Gotcha. What, so do you have any other reasons for supporting Trump over Hillary? Uh, yeah. Um, I, I also I don't really like kind of I, I feel like there's been a new and this is like kind of like more of like a, a meta thing. But I feel like there's been kind of like a social uh, I guess like oligarchy created between like uh, certain politicians like musicians and celebrities to try to encourage and direct public opinion and make people do certain things and lean in certain political directions and I dislike that kind of so social oligarchy and because Trump was kind of against that I felt like that was a a, a strike against uh, what I felt like was kind of I don't really know if it's like censorship, thought control, but um, I, I feel like having all people that are, I guess, like in that oligarchy, all thinking the same thing and dictating culture, I don't think is a good thing. And I felt like it kind of decentralized people that create culture. And I thought that was better for the society. I'm just curious. Is there a single policy position that you agree with Trump on over Hillary or is all of it like related to like culture and sjws and stuff uh I, i'd have to think about that honestly that, like so I'm that's a no that's a, i have no idea what the policy positions no, it's not of a, it's person. not a <laughs> no no uh whenever uh did you watch the clip obviously you watched the clip that i uh i posted right yeah um and, and so you you tweeted it out uh, i said very clearly in that clip that i was not prepared to have a policy discussion at all but it's not uh, that you're not prepared. It's that you have no idea. You don't know no, any of the a, policy positions of either person. I you didn't can't say, name a single of one. Of course I know the policy positions, but I'm sure that you do too because you debate this with people all the time and you know them better than me and you're going to be able to talk circles around me. I'm not me trying to because, talk circles no. around you. I'm just asking you a simple question. Uh, what I is one that Trump policy that you prefer over a Clinton you're gonna policy? Do, you're, going to be like, you're going to be like, well, yeah, but what about this other thing that happened? Because you know more about this than I do, and I can't counter what you're saying. Because I don't have the same experience and knowledge as, as you do. I'm not. I'm not, like, trying, that's to, what's I'm not trying to. I'm not trying to trap you, dog. The, this, the it, issue that I run problem. into. The issue I run into. I notice when I talk to a lot of people that okay. are big Trump supporters is that they seem to be very emotional. Like they're very feels based. Like I feel like Trump is the best guy because he talks real. Because he's not PC. Like these are all the answers I get. But nobody has anything of substance to say about him. I don't. There's not a single policy position. There's not any position that he's taken on any important matter. It's always just like he's anti SJW. He's against the PC culture. Like that seems to be the only answer. So I was curious if you had a single policy position of Trump that you actually enjoyed, whether it was on immigration, the economy, healthcare, foreign policy. Um, just I, I don't think that people should illegally immigrate into the country. I, wow. I don't really feel like that's was a there a candidate. Thing. That thought that people should illegally immigrate into the country? Uh, I, I felt like Hillary was a little bit more friendly to it. And I don't really think that amnesty might not be the best decision. And I thought that she might do that more than he would. And I also thought that uh, 
I, I don't really like Obamacare. I don't like the way that it's structured or set up. And I felt like Trump kind of shaking that up would be better than Hillary doing it because I thought she would just continue the same things that Obama was doing. What don't you like about the Affordable Care Act? Uh, I don't like the Affordable Care Act because it forces people into paying a private corporation and the government is compelling a uh, private citizen to paying a private corporation. And uh, uh, as a person, I don't really think that should happen. What do you think is a good alternative to the Affordable Care Act? Do you think we should just ax it? Um, do you mean like on a long term or like what would be like my ideal health care system? Well, like Trump or, right now is trying to just get rid of it with no replacement or he was. It seems like it's failed. Mm -hmm. what, do you think that was a good approach to dealing with the Affordable Care Act was just getting rid of it completely and then let it going back to what we had before? No, I don't even I didn't like what we had before either. Like, I mean, I can dislike what is and I can also dislike what was. Okay, so Hillary has her plans for health care, whether or not they would work or not work. I never heard Trump give a plan on health care ever in any of his speeches. He always said we were going to make it better, but he never actually gave a plan. And mm -hmm. it's obvious now that he doesn't have one and didn't have one. So I'm curious how you can support Trump's plan for health care, I guess just because it wasn't Hillary, because you didn't like the direction, I guess, it was going? Uh, I didn't like the direction Obamacare was going in. Gotcha. I mean... That, that was the reason, and I don't think that... Uh, I mean, do you think that a private uh, private citizen should be compelled uh, by the government to pay, uh, to pay a private corporation? Um, philosophically, I guess I'm kind of opposed to it, but pragmatically, it seems like that's the direction that we need to move in. It seems like most other countries have the healthcare stuff a lot more pinned down than the United States does, and we're kind of the odd one out here, so it seems like that's well, the direction. I, I, I'll even give you that. I can even agree with that, but I feel like a lot of the other countries have it done by the government which is something that I would be a little bit more comfortable with rather than having a private corporation do it. So you're and saying that I, maybe like single payer is something that... Yes, uh, I, I think that that would be better, yeah. Then how can you possibly disagree with Hillary when she was one of the first people pushing single payer? I mean, there are quotes of Donald Trump saying that too. I mean, like, I'm not really going to go into saying, like, if Donald Trump would do that more than Hillary. I felt like Hillary would do it more because... She had a lot of donors, and those donors were probably oftentimes people who were either invested in or actually the healthcare uh, industry people themselves. So I felt like it was in her best interest based on the people that were giving her money to perpetuate the system that was happening or it was currently in place. Gotcha. How do you feel about Trump now? Do you think it was a good decision? Do you think Trump's... Uh, I don't know. I don't really... It's not that I really regret it at all. Uh, I think some really stupid shit's happened, and... Um, Ultimately, like, uh, again, it was more of like the ide ideological perspectives that I had uh, at the beginning, like with the uh, the cultural oligarchy. And um, uh, that that was the main thing for me is I don't really like kind of how culture is being dictated and centralized from a very uh, small group of people. And uh, that's what I really, really don't like. And that's what I think is the most important thing to move against. OK, I'm curious when you when you say culture is centralized and dictated by a small group of people, what do you mean by that? Uh, well, I feel like a lot of times whenever something uh, happens, uh, like any sort of like big, like major event, uh, I, I don't want to like get like very specific because I recently had a strike on my account. So I don't want to get into like any specific things. But generally, um, I, I would say that anything that would happen, like the mainstream media, a uh, number of politicians and also like uh, musicians, singers and other celebrities would all kind of come together and say a certain thing like, oh, this is bad, this is racist, this is whatever. And I, I didn't like how everything kind of came together in that way. Whereas uh, I think like whenever it came to like the general population, things were a lot more split. Okay. And you don't want to get into specifics because I can understand that if you Yeah, yeah. Gotcha. You don't feel like the Republicans try to push their own narrative of things that go on, of different events that happen? Um, well, again, it's just a matter of kind of a pendulum of power. And I feel like that pendulum is a little bit over too, too far towards the left. And I feel like kind of even expressing certain like conservative viewpoints, which maybe even I don't even hold, uh, is considered, um, I, I guess, like taboo. And I feel like that's very bad for, uh, I guess, like political discourse and being able to discuss things. Gotcha. Okay. Does that is that reasonable to you, or or what? What do you what do you think? Um, I think that policy is very important, and it makes me sad when people make very important political decisions based on some things having to do with culture. So I mean, I don't know. I guess I can understand 
Um, in, in mainstream media today, I think that left-leaning viewpoints are probably overrepresented, but I don't know if that's a good reason to put somebody like Trump in the White House. And I think that the Republicans have a lot of very serious, real problems dealing with policy in the United States that are much, much, much more important than somebody on like a movie or a musician saying something that hurts your feelings is kind of my stance. Uh, well, it's not about really hurting your feelings. It's more about shutting down people that disagree with you. And also, whenever you look at like the policies uh, th that are in place, like I understand the policies are very important, but the president doesn't necessarily dictate all policies in the first place. So you're not really making like the end all and be all decision with policy by electing the president. Um, also, on top of that, when you say uh, shutting down okay. people who disagree with you, do you mean like like President Trump labeling news organizations that report things as fake news because he doesn't like them? Or are you talking about him threatening to open up libel or slander laws to, to take some people to court because they publish stories that he doesn't like? Or, Well, uh, I think actually, yeah, we could talk about that. So uh, for one, I think it's obvious that uh, fake news, if you want to use the term, uh, is not one-sided like the republicans or the democrats or liberals or conservatives don't have nobody has a monopoly on fake news uh people make shit up all the time do you think that cnn like like somebody like that do you think makes shit up all the time on the same level as like breitbart uh i don't know uh honestly i'm not sure uh i don't really read breitbart so i have no idea uh, i hear a lot of crazy shit about them but i also hear all the time that cnn is fake news too so i i don't really what do you think on, can you think of a single story that cnn has reported that's been actually fake news when you say fake news what do you mean by that oh there's a lot of different uh different like shades of fake i mean you can have something that's fake and it's just completely untrue you can have something that's fake and it's reported inaccurately on purpose you can have something that's fake where something is emphasized more than it should have been. And I think all of those different things are not necessarily fake, but they're deceptive. And the deception is really what it's about. It's not about people just coming and lying about things. It's about people intentionally omitting or including uh, to a very high degree certain different aspects of stories in order to facilitate and propagate a certain political opinion or political agenda. Gotcha. What, can you give me an example of a news source that you consider trustworthy? Uh, well, I don't really look at any specific news source. Uh, I'll try to look at things from a couple of different directions and then try to identify kind of common variables and things that probably happened and then just try to see how things evolve from there. Uh, usually, if it's a big issue, uh, I'll be on like Twitter or something like that, and then I'll use Twitter to kind of go to different news sites from there. So, I mean, I, I've gotten news from CNN myself. Uh, I'm not saying that everything that CNN publishes is fake. Uh, and it's it's more complicated than that. I guess it's just interesting to me because, tr like, Trump literally lies, like, almost on a daily basis at this point. And it's strange that you would call out somebody like CNN as fake news when they do a pretty good job on retractions. I think they had one big story that was a fuck-up, and three people got fired over it. Um, they, they're usually pretty quick on that. It just seems strange when you would equate CNN to, to like any random tabloid. That's like a very strange thing to me. And then when I ask you for like a credible news source, you say you go on Twitter. That's just, that's very strange. I didn't to me. say I go on Twitter. What did I actually say? You said that you go on Twitter and you look at common variables from other unnamed news sources to try to. No, I, I well, first thing I said is whenever something happens, like probably like usually, I mean, the first thing I do is I'll probably check Reddit. And uh, I'd go on Reddit and obviously I'd just look at like probably like some of the highest rated comments and not, I mean, sorry, not comments, uh, like articles and things that are posted on there if I really wanted to find something out about that. And then, of course, I'd look on Twitter. Uh, there's a lot of people that are posting information on Twitter just because like you're going to use Twitter and say it in kind of like a derogatory word or a term or meaning or whatever um well, so that doesn't mean that it's a bad thing it's to not do. that it's derogatory it's not that it's necessarily bad it's just that you're getting news that's heavily filtered at that point if you get all of your news from reddit you're getting news that's filtered through a very left-leaning well, lens if you're getting your news from twitter depending on who you follow that could be any number that's like getting news from Facebook. yeah yeah like well, well, where do you think that I should get news then i mean obviously um you know everywhere that i'm going like i said i said cnn uh, obviously, and that it, apparently if that's not uh, acceptable, where do you think that I should get news? Well, I, I mean, was obviously curious, I can't you go said there. That and CNN could, could be fake news, like on a level with anything else. That was just the curious thing. CNN uh, has a slant for sure, but they typically I, do good reporting. Well, but. that's what I was just saying. I was talking about the slant. I wasn't talking about people publishing actual fake information. I was talking about the slant. Then why would you using... call it fake news? I wasn't calling it fake news. 
Um, I was using that as an example because that's a term that everybody uses. Don't you think it might be bad to use the term fake news when you're just talking about news that might be slightly slanted when there are actual people that put out fake news? Uh, not whenever the term is used all the time and it's something that people can easily understand and identify with and they know basically what I'm saying. So you think that uh, if I, because reading your chat right now, you think that the average person in your chat that is saying fake news just means that CNN might have a slight political slant? Do you, do you think that's what? No, I don't think that's fake news at all. But if you use something uh, to like kind of, if you misrepresent something to influence and push that political slant, I think that's a problem too. Do, um, can, do you, I, I'm not trying to like be really picky, but just because I follow no, a lot no, of no, news, like what do you think okay. is an issue that CNN like intentionally misrepresents, or something that they're like hardcore misrepresenting to, to like push a political narrative? Um, I've, I've for one, CNN was one example. Uh, okay, I, are I, any I, other I, major I, mainstream MSNBC, what any other major mainstream, um, the Politico, Washington Post, like. Uh, I, I think for one, uh, I think like whenever there are riots by, um, what do you call it, uh, like people who are like Antifa and stuff, I, I feel like the violence by those people is downplayed by the mainstream media. And I feel like also it's almost vilified by them. And I think that it encourages political violence. And I don't think that's good for any sort of discourse or anything no, moving forward. Uh, that I mean, like as one example. Um, that's something wait, that I've you say, noticed. Wait, I'm sorry, because you said vilified. Wait, what do you mean that when you say vilified? Uh, I, I feel like people, like, once they see that they're almost, they're not really identifying them as kind of like freedom fighters in a way, but they're kind of saying that the political violence that they take part in is more or less acceptable in a way. And I, I don't feel like the mainstream news organizations take a hard enough stance against those people. And I feel like having political violence is absolutely something that's not acceptable at all. And I feel like the mainstream news organizations should push that forward as well. Gotcha. I guess I would have to. Um, I guess I would have to look. I, I don't feel like I see that that they're ad, that they're pushing for political violence on. on no, the I didn't left say that they were pushing. Or, or, for or that they're violence. giving them a pass. I don't. I don't feel like. Uh, I, I, I. I feel like they're rationalizing it too much. And the fact that they don't have a hardline stance against it is, uh, I, I think it's deceptive. And also at the same time, I think it's because they kind of, I don't know if they really want them to do that. And, and you could make this argument from two different perspectives. You could say they would want them to do that because uh, they agree with them politically. And they'd also want them to do that because they make money off of advertising what these people do. So I don't know really which one it is, or even if each one is happening, but the way that they cover it, I disagree with. And based on their political standpoints, I don't think it's outside the realm of possibility that they're putting that stuff out there because they halfway agree with them, which is why they aren't coming down on them as hard as I think they should. Okay. I guess I, I like doing like a quick Google search. Like I can find stories on CNN. Like I'm, here's one with like right now it says they look at the violent anarchist group Antifa. I guess I, I, I read these sources somewhat commonly. I just I guess mm -hmm. I don't get the impression that CNN is trying to say that Antifa or the violence that happened at the G20 summit or any of the violent movements that happened in the U.S. I, I don't get the impression that CNN is trying to rationalize it or say that it's okay. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm not saying that they're trying to rationalize it. I, I think that there are certain things that are like universally bad, right? Yeah, violence is bad, uh, sure. And there are different levels of violence. And if you're responding to violence, that's better than if you're just uh, inciting violence. And also, like, I just feel like there's a lot more context to it. And I disagree that uh, they don't, I guess, like, cover it or they do cover it fairly. I think that they should have a very hardline stance against any type of political violence. And I feel like they don't do that enough. And I'm sure there are articles that uh, say the opposite. I think that you can probably find like articles that are uh, maybe liberal leaning on Fox News, right? But just because you find outliers doesn't necessarily mean that there isn't a trend. Gotcha. Uh, like a as another example, um, you know, there was a guy that rushed the stage at uh, whenever Donald Trump was, um, uh, he was like still running for president. Do you remember that? Um. Yeah, I think so. Those uh, yeah. service dudes got him or whatever. Yeah, they got him. And I felt like interviewing a person that's rushing the stage of a political candidate and in a way kind of humanizing that person 
was incredibly irresponsible and also very dangerous, and it set a very bad precedent. Uh, do you agree with that? Wait, because they what? Uh, they interviewed the person that rushed the stage of a political candidate. And that person could have had a weapon. That person could have been trying to hurt him. They could have. They could have any kind of thing like that. And luckily, they didn't. Um, and I would say the same thing with Hillary Clinton, too. I don't think that people should be able to use vigilante justice to influence politics, right? And uh, I feel like the way that he was treated was absolutely irresponsible. Sure, the media has a problem in general with glorifying killers and mass murders and shit. I don't disagree with that. Well, he wasn't that. a killer. Sure, I or mean, in that circumstance, yeah, I think that yeah. was that was probably pretty irresponsible. Mm -hmm. Well, that's another example. And uh, I would say that's like another confounding uh, bit of evidence that uh, I think that they don't really come down on people that are, uh, in that example, moving towards political violence or people like Antifa who actually are politically violent. Gotcha. Did you uh, have problems with Trump talking about the Second Amendment people dealing with Hillary? Uh, in, in, like, what do you mean by that? He said something along the lines of, like, Hillary's coming after your guns or whatever. There's nothing you can do to stop it. Well, maybe the Second Amendment people can do something about it. Uh, I don't know. I mean, like, he says a lot of stupid shit. I don't think you're going to get me to say that Trump doesn't say stupid shit, and I, I obviously disagree with that. I disagree with it entirely. I'm not saying that, well, the one time that Trump did it is okay, and the other times that other people do it is good. I, I don't think it's I don't think it's good no matter what. Uh, this isn't like a, a I, I guess like um, it's not politically motivated in a way. Like it's not politically motivated from a certain direction, like left or right. I just don't think it's good what? in general. Oh, yeah, I mean, I agree with that. It just seems strange okay. that because some people in the media say certain things, now you're going to vote for a guy that has literally advocated for violence across several rallies because the media might have irresponsibly handled a dude. I, I, it just seems like you're like you're like reaching very far for, for things that upset you, I guess, in left-leaning media, whereas like there are direct examples of, of Trump multiple times making pretty violent statements at rallies. Guys like these used to leave in body bags or, you know, beat them up, I'll cover your legal fees, you know, or the Second Amendment people will deal with Hillary. I think even just recently he had another one of those things where he was telling the police, like, bang his head on the car, rough him up a little or whatever. Like, it just seems strange that, like, Trump himself literally makes these statements and you're, I guess, indifferent towards that. But, like, when the media has maybe irresponsibly handled some issues relating to political violence, well, that's a 100% reason to, to throw your hat in the ring for Trump. I didn't say it was. I mean, these are all confounding things. Like, it's not like, oh, well, it's because one time they reported on somebody in the wrong way, and I disagree with it, so I'm going to vote for this other guy. There's a lot of different reasons. Like, I'm just giving you a few examples. It's like maybe 5% here, 2% here, 3% there. Uh, it's not like this is the one reason why I'm doing it or why I did it, right? Or why I felt the way that I did. Okay. Um, it seems strange to me that, yeah. like, every time I give an example of of, of, of anything, I, I guess kind of question your motives. Like, well, this is very confounding. It's very complicated. But then, like, you take Hillary's one line of the public-private position and no context is allowed, no other understanding of that statement. Like, it's literally, like, that is the one thing. And then you mm -hmm. pretend that that's equivalent to having a stance where publicly you, you say no war and privately you want World War Three. It seems like you're giving a lot of credit to I didn't say to World War Three, dude. Well, you like, said, like, a war. Different. You said a war. You said yeah, your public position is peace and your private position is war. Right. It seems strange that, like, you, you'll take Hillary at that one line, like, hardcore, no context, like, that is the statement she made, and I'm going to interpret it as I want. But then, like, when it comes to Trump or anybody else, it's like, well, there's a lot of confounding variables. There's a confounding reasons why I don't like these people, blah, blah, blah. I don't know. It just seems a little unfair. You, you think that it's a double standard. Uh, yeah, yeah, a little bit. And you think that I'm applying a double standard on a Hillary more unfairly than Trump. Yeah, to some extent. Um, uh, I, I think that that would I, – I think based off, like, what I said, I, I could see why you'd feel that way. And um, ultimately, for me, it was more about the, um, I guess, like the social oligarchy thing. And I really just dislike the idea that certain opinions can't be held and certain opinions are kind of not allowed. And that is really what bothered me. And I felt like being like a Trump supporter was almost like a politically incorrect thing to do. And it's not really that I was against political incorrectness. But I dislike the idea of positioning a certain political belief as being uh, like like you're not allowed to have this political belief. I, I dislike that a lot. Gotcha. And, and that was basically the, the main thing for me.
And I think discourse is very important and being able to come at things from an open mind is very important. I hope that I came uh, at, at this discussion in the same way. Uh, I'm not saying that Trump is some great person or anything like that. But to me, I feel like being able to have those open political discussions and, and free speech, the ideal of free speech, not only the First Amendment, uh, is incredibly important. And even though doing something like voting for Trump might not, I mean, I'll completely even agree with you. Maybe it might not be the best decision. I don't know. I mean, maybe Hillary would be even worse. We can't know. But at the same time, uh, I think it's really important to be able to come at things from both directions. And I felt like with Trump, that really wasn't possible. I mean, some of the stuff he was saying was pretty hard to come at from both directions, to, to be fair. That's probably why a lot okay. of it felt pretty shut down. But um, Okay, well, uh, what what's hard to come at from both directions? I think that the statements that he makes about Mexicans in general, pretty hard to come at from both directions. Saying that women that get abortions need to be punished, it's probably a pretty hard one in a post-Roe v. Wade world to swallow. Um, well, say, let's. Or, sorry, can I? So I didn't mean to interrupt you. Oh, no problem. Um, but we can talk about the abortion thing. Okay. Uh, so if you believe, uh, I don't believe this. I think abortion should be legal. But okay. if you do believe that uh, having an abortion is killing a baby or killing a person, mm -hmm. wouldn't it make sense logically for somebody to be punished for killing a person? Yeah, I guess so. Okay. Uh, so, so what else? I, I, well, I mean, like, if you believe that sex before marriage is a sin, didn't you don't you think it's rational that you would be opposed to anybody having sex that isn't married? Shouldn't that be punishable? Like, I could make that same argument for any moral position. Like, that doesn't make it more more uh, palatable or whatever. Like, just because Trump happens to think this thing morally doesn't make it easier for people to understand. Like, I can make that same argument for any religious idea. Like, I, I think that having sex before marriage is a lot different than abortion. I mean, one of one person, one of them is where you kill a potential human being, and the other one is where two people fuck. I mean, it's completely different to to some extent, but it depends on how to seriously you extent. take. Eh, it depends on how seriously you take to your your religion. Sex is a gift given to you by God to build families. Um, premarital sex can result in children being born out of wedlock that can lead to abortion, or children being born in, in broken families. You're you're misappropriating something given to, to you by God. Like that can be a pretty serious sin. Like sex before marriage can be a pretty big thing. Um, well, it may be not quite as big as abortion, but I, I mean, I'm not saying they're the same sin. I'm just saying that you could make an argument that this is why this person would say it, but that's not in 2017 or 2016 talking about how women should be punished for having abortions. Is, I, that's going to be a position that's really hard to be on both sides of. Well, for one, I don't think that the, uh, the year uh, would influence the decision uh, at all or how it should be looked at. Wait, um, what What do you mean the year wouldn't influence the decision at all? I, I don't know. I just don't really see like why if it's 2017 or... 1917 uh, i feel like you don't think that morals in general in society are different between 2017 and 1917 uh, i think that they're morally different but doing what's morally right is a little bit more uh, uh i guess like universal uh but, depending but wait, wait, if morals are universal then do you think if you were advocating for women to vote in the 1780s do you think that would get as much traction as i don't understand what, what, what do women having to vote about what, what, what does that have to do with this what, what do you mean you're, women you're, haven't voted? You're making it sound like that the, the morals are like completely universal and, and don't change as time goes on. Like if we were talking about gay marriage in 1920, it's, the conversation is going to be a lot different than gay marriage in yeah, 2020. I, yeah, sure. But I, I really just think that the whole year argument isn't really as strong as you'd say. And, and also, I, I think that the way that the, um, what do you call it, uh, abortion, there's a completely like non-religious component to that. If you're killing another person, that's different than having sex. Like, there's not really a religious component, uh, or there's not a religious component to um, to having sex with people before you're uh, uh, you're married. You know, so if you're not religious, sorry, I got confused there for a second. But if you're not religious, uh, I don't really see like why that would be an issue at all. I guess if Trump would have given like a good philosophical defense of his position, I'd be more inclined to agree with you, but he, he really didn't. Well, we're not talking about Trump's position. We're talking about two sides of an issue. And that's what I was talking about is that there are two sides to the issue and being able to talk about both sides of the issue should be OK. Sure. So regardless, regardless of the way that Trump uh, said it, which is usually he talks like an asshole all the time. 
like I'm not going to say that, yeah, Trump is this great guy that's really well spoken or anything like that. What I'm saying is that both issues, both sides of that issue should be able to be discussed without somebody being labeled or being attacked. Okay, I think you can discuss both sides of the issue, but Trump wasn't discussing both sides of the issue. He wasn't giving a profound philosophical statement. Of course on, he wasn't. He was, he he was, was giving saying that, opinion. Yeah, he was just saying that women that have abortion should be punished, right? I think that's a, in today's climate, I, I, can I say today, or is that like really triggering? Uh, how about, I, I, how about I, well, 40 well, years after Roe v. Wade, okay. it's very hard to, to get on stage and say in an interview, I think women okay. should be punished for abortion. That's a that's a that's a pretty hard statement. Like I I would be very surprised if there were two positive sides to, to that issue publicly. Like okay, we need to punish women for abortion. Like it's a very big women's health issue. It's a very big thing that, that we've kind of moved towards in the United States. Whether or not you think it's better or wrong, I think you could have a philosophical discussion on the merits of it. Personally, I actually am pro life because I do think that killing a fetus is is killing a person. But okay. but Trump's defense of it was not that he just said that women should be punished for it. Like it, there wasn't any anything more than that. Yeah, and I think that he should have uh, clarified that better too. Okay. Uh, but I also feel like punishing people for not having health insurance is also really ridiculous at this day and age too. But here we are. Kind, so yeah, kind of. But it, but, but I mean, uh, it's, it's okay. like a tax. It's the way to fund it, right? I mean, it's a tax. Yeah. What it, 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 the tax goes to the government. Which for, you're, you're for paying Geico. Right? You're paying Geico. You're not paying the government. Okay, like, the Geico point, the is point, a CEO the, that makes millions of dollars a year, and yeah, you're but, giving them money because the government makes you. The point of the mandate was to fund, otherwise the insurance companies wouldn't be able to afford to carry all of the suboptimal uh, people that they would have to as a result of the mandate. The point of the mandate was that if you don't get health insurance, the companies won't make enough in order to fund health care for all of the sicker people that are now getting health care. Right? That's the entire point of the mandate. Yeah, I, I understand that there's a point to the mandate. I understand that there are two sides. I just think that the side of forcing people to pay a private company is worse than the side of not everybody being insured. Okay. So you think that tens of millions of people losing their health insurance and going back to filing bankruptcy or living in destitution or whatever is, is preferable to forcing everybody to pay for health insurance? Uh, I, I mean, like forcing everybody to pay for health insurance, I, I feel like they're probably about the same. Um, and also a lot of times, like I, I know from experience, I, I grew up poor and my mom, uh, I've had to take her to the hospital and to the doctor a number of times. And, uh, you know, she didn't have health insurance or anything and we're not, um, you know, bankrupt or anything like that. Uh, they do. They already had ways before of taking care of people that didn't have the money. If they already and, had ways of taking care of it before, why is it that over sixty percent of bankruptcies were filed for medical reasons? There's a lot of reasons for that. Uh, I mean, like I'm not saying that nobody ever went out of money because of health insurance. It's not I'm just nobody. From it was, my perspective, okay, over half the people that filed bankruptcy in the United States before the ACA filed it as a result of medical issues so, so i mean like to say that like people well, usually file bankruptcy to protect assets not necessarily because they're out of money okay i don't think that normal people use bankruptcy oftentimes in the same way that, that rich people restructure businesses or, or use bankruptcy like well i mean like if you're going to talk to a lawyer isn't that what they'd recommend that you file bankruptcy yeah of course because you get to keep like one house and one car but then you're if you file a, a chapter or 11 or whatever, what that's a lot more than most people have Okay, but bankruptcy, <laughs> I, the, the way that poor people file bankruptcy is not the same way that wealthy people file the bankruptcy. Poor people wouldn't be filing bankruptcy at all because whenever they uh, send the money, the bills to the poor people, um, they, would, they wouldn't be able to pay them at all. Sure, and, and you have to file bankruptcy wages. in order to, bankruptcy is asking for protection from the banks against debts that you owe, right? So you file bankruptcy so that they don't start putting liens on your houses or trying to take your assets. They can't or... put a lien on your house uh, because of like medical expenses, or at least they can't here on Texas as far as I know. Sure. Okay, but what if you lose if all of your money due to medical expenses, and now you have, and now you have no money to pay for your house? Well, it's not. You're not even. Uh, what do you call it? If you're losing all of your money, then you have enough money to lose. And if you have that much money to lose, then you're probably not that poor, which is why they'd probably file for bankruptcy in the first place, which is to protect their assets. Okay. You, you know that the bankruptcy also destroys your credit for like the next seven years as well, right? I'd rather destroy my credit than my bank account. 
Okay. I mean, come on, man. Uh, don't you think it would be better to not have people filing bankruptcy for medical causes? That we're the only country in the world that does I this, agree. and you're trying to I, defend the I, idea I and, that well, and maybe. That's why it, I, I think we should have single. That's that's yeah, that's exactly right. Uh, I think I'm trying to get to probably the same place that you are. I just feel like Trump is not the way there. Though <laughs> Trump is never getting Hillary us to single. Either. What? I, and I didn't think Hillary was either. And Hillary was a proponent of single payer. I, I don't understand how you can say that. I don't know. I, I think that Hillary. Um, I don't think that she would be as much, and I think that she wouldn't be. And again, that's the uh, going back to the public and private position thing, and because a lot of people that uh, donated to her were involved in healthcare industry, and so and a lot of the corporations that donated to her were also involved in healthcare. So I feel like something like that that might take money away from them is not the, something that she would uh, she'd move forward on. And also, she'd probably try to continue the Obamacare, which is, I, I felt like, it just shouldn't have been that way. I mean, as I said before. Gotcha. Yeah. What about his statements on Mexicans? What about his statements on okay. the Mexican judge? How about that? The American judge that was whiter okay. than me that wasn't allowed to rule on his case because he had Mexican parents. The federal judge. Uh, he wasn't allowed? Well, no, Trump said he didn't think he should be allowed. Um, so that person, uh, if I remember, uh, do you remember that person's name? Uh, so I can look it up? I don't remember his exact name. No. If I remember right, wasn't that person part of an organization uh, that was like very pro-Hispanic like uh, or very pro-Mexican? Not uh, really, no, kind of. Not really know kind of what well, well that means that you know what you're I'm talking about. Though, I know right? exactly what you're talking about, but I don't okay. know if you're gonna give me the fake news version or the actual news version. Oh, okay. <laughs> well what well, well let's get both and then we'll sure. uh, we'll figure out what so, it is. So the fake news version is the guy is part of La Raza, which is a very okay. radical pro Mexico anti American organization that wants Mexico to rise up again or some crazy shit. That's yeah, the yeah, fake yeah. news version. The pro the, the real news version is okay. there are thousands of organizations called La Raza. The part the organization that he was a part of was I think that it was an organization that tried to it was for like people that wanted to grow up and be lawyers and I think they helped to draft kids in to be like paralegals or some shit or it was like a scholarship fund and mentorship and whatnot like that was pretty much all it was it wasn't like a massively politically active organization that, that he was a part of he wasn't part of like the La Raza terrorist group in Mexico trying to overthrow the United States so, so when you say like he was part of a, an organization, he was part of something called La Raza, but it wasn't the like radical pro-Muslim anti-American organization that a lot of people tried to sell it as. Well, if I look up La Raza on Wikipedia, it says the Spanish term Raza translates to race or people. So that certainly seems like it would be oriented towards a certain race, right? Yeah, it was because I think that they what they advocated for was helping Hispanics. It was like a okay. Hispanic outreach okay. thing. So okay, um, so if you are part of organizations that advocate for a certain race, I feel like it would be a judge's responsibility to be able to look at a case fairly to recuse himself of something because there could be a potential conflict of interest. Okay. There's absolutely no conflict of interest, though, because America okay. isn't made up of a specific race. I didn't say it was. We're and not talking is... about a race. Oh, because I thought you said race. Well, uh, that's what it said on Wikipedia. Okay, so uh, what does race have to do with, with being an American federal judge? Well, uh, it has something to do with it whenever you join an organization that has to do with race. But what does race have to do with being an American or a federal judge, though? You don't feel like being part of an organization that is specifically designed to benefit certain people and then having to look over a case of one of those certain people isn't grounds for somebody to recuse themselves? Huh. No, that, it's just as a question. Uh, no. I... No? No. No, I, I completely feel that You don't that think way. that Hispanic I, people are American. That's what you're no, saying. What? You just no. re That's what you're saying. Uh, what are you talking so about? So you said that you don't feel like joining an organization that looks after a specific race should be allowed to rule on something that has to do with people that affect people of a specific race. I'm not race. making a distinction. Okay. He is. He's no, the no. one that's in the group. Okay, but, but Mexico and issues dealing with Mexicans, okay, that's not Americans that are Hispanic. These are two very separate groups of people. Okay. You can be an American that is Hispanic and have nothing to do with Mexico. So the idea that you would say that, like, well, if you're part of an organization called The Race, 
How can you possibly make an, a ruling on these American things that has to deal with other people? I didn't people say or, how could you possibly make it. Well, I, you I think said he should just, recuse himself because I, I he's dealing. I think he should. It's not how could you possibly. I'm not ruling out the case, the possibility that he could rule on it fairly. I just feel like as a judge, I feel like it would be the most responsible thing. Why would it be somebody... responsible? What's wrong with Hispanic Americans I... or being a Hispanic American What's and making a ruling? What's wrong with Hispanic Americans? Us? Is that really what you're asking me? Well, What's I'm wrong with Hispanic why... Americans? Well, well, I'm curious why you think that because he's Hispanic and because he's part of an organization it's not that helps because Hispanics. He's Hispanic. He could be he could be any color, but if you're part of an organization that helps a certain race of people, and then you have a case dealing with one of those sorts of people, I feel like there's a conflict of interest. Okay. I guess I just don't I, don't I don't understand how helping American Hispanics means that you can't be involved in any cases now that have to do with with legislating. And it wasn't even having to do with Mexico. Right. The case was just over Trump University. But you think that even though this guy is an American born citizen, he could literally run for president. The, the, the yeah. judge literally could run for president because his parents are from Mexico. It doesn't have anything to do with his race or his ethnicity at all. It has to do with his actions. And who he associates himself with. If you're associating yourself with a group like that, I feel like there could be a conflict of interest. And I don't really see how you wouldn't feel that way. Because it's uh, just a pro-Hispanic group. What does it have to do with now Now you can't make a ruling on anybody that is in any way involved with anything having to do with Mexico? Even though the case had nothing to do with the wall or anything related to it? I, I didn't say that it had anything to do with it at all. Um, I'm saying that uh, if you have... If you're part of an organization that works towards benefiting another group of people, like any group of people, like regardless of race or anything, and then you're a judge and you're part of that group and a court case comes up and a person that's part of that group is involved in the court case, I feel like there's a conflict of interest, regardless of the individual, regardless of affiliation or race or where they were born or anything. I feel like there's a very, very clear conflict of interest i guess it just seems very strange to me that like the, like so that means that any judge that is part of any hispanic or latino thing can never make any ruling on anything so only white judges for trump or non-hispanic judges for trump no no why why would that why would i say that why would that be the case? I don't. I don't well, like, because I, I don't understand. Then, like, so if anybody is in any way affiliated with anything having to do with Hispanic people, you're not allowed to be a judge on a Trump case. Being affiliated with something is different than being part of an organization that's designed to benefit people that are like that. Uh, so, for one, it's not just an affiliation. Now, I don't really know all of the context be, uh, behind how he was part of the organization or anything like that or what the organization was trying to do specifically. And I could look into that. You could look into that. But I feel like on a very, very basic level, regardless of this case or anything, I feel like people that are part of an organization that's going towards benefiting a certain group of people, whenever that group of people are involved in a court case, that the judge should recuse themselves. And even maybe maybe judges should not be in advocacy groups like that because it creates a it's conflict of interest. It's not an advocacy interest. group. He's just It's just a group for outreach for poor Hispanic kids to help them grow up and become lawyers if they want to. So now as by, a judge— By, by he, what? By advocating for them? No, not. But it was like a mentor program and a scholarship program. You're not allowed to help kids now because you might be asked to rule on a guy's case where that you guy— You said has... it wasn't an advocacy program, and now that you're saying you're basically defining advocacy. I'm sorry. I'm like I'm saying that like the people like advocate for the kids, like a mentor would advocate, not like it was a political advocacy group. Well, I wasn't saying that either. Um, uh, uh, nobody's saying that. Like, do you agree? Like, on a very, very, uh, on an abstract level. That a judge shouldn't try and make rulings and like be in cases whenever they're in an organization that the people that are involved in the case are in. Like, no, it, it just seems like you don't think so. No, like okay, the, no, well, nothing. Then. He's That's a federal fine. judge. He went through all of the work that he needed okay. to. He passed the bar exam. He became a judge. Yeah. He put in all the work. He's an American citizen that is entitled to all the rights and freedoms of American. Absolutely. Life. And now he's presented with a case that has to do with a guy. It's not even related to Mexicans at all the, or, or Hispanics or anything. The case had nothing to do with it. But because the guy that he has to present on this case over also has a political position that's against Mexico, now he has to step back and he's not allowed to, to, to preside on that? That just seems – I don't know. That seems, I didn't say he has to. Well, you didn't say he has to, but you said he should, right? That that, yeah, that guy should, should recuse himself? Like I don't know. That yeah, just I, seems I, – I, I think that would be – 
the most fair. Uh, and I, I feel like if he didn't do that and him not doing that, it, it opens up the possibility for people to say that kind of stuff, like what I'm saying now. And uh, for all we know, like nobody knows what's going on in his head, right? Um, but for all we know, uh, you know, he could be doing it the way that you're saying or doing it the way that I'm saying. Like, we don't really know. But I just feel like removing that variable is important in order for keeping, if nothing else, the illusion of justice. So I guess, like, the problem is that, like, recursively you could play that, like, a million different ways. Like, okay. if anybody has, like, a Canadian parent or something or if anybody has like um like an italian parent and then you have to rule on 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 maybe a new york mayor who's passed like some type of housing reform that disproportionately impacts italians like are you not allowed to to preside on that case like that just seems like such a weird well, thing I, to... I think that using it's not allowed i, I didn't say it's not allowed i'm sorry when i say I, it's I, not allowed what i mean is they should recuse themselves not it should be yeah. made illegal but like, i don't you think know. they it depends should depends on the context like i mean i can't say like for every single little thing i'm just saying like overall it uh, depends on what it is specifically. But yeah, I mean, I, I think in general, yeah, judges should try to move away from being part of, uh, I guess, like cases that they could have some sort of emotional attachment to. Yeah, I, I think that's absolutely true. Gotcha. Okay. I guess I just, I completely disagree. I feel like if you're a federal judge and you've put in the work, unless there's like a very obvious direct, like direct um, conflict or whatever, that, that just seems like a really extreme thing to expect, in my opinion. I don't really think it's extreme as much as it is. Um, I, I think it's just fair. And I think it's important to make things as fair as possible. And in trying to do that, I think it's important to try to remove as many variables as you can out of uh, the pursuit of justice. And I feel like whenever you have somebody that could have a conflict of interest, it's just better for everyone if they're not involved. I understand. It just seems that you have a very low opinion, I guess, of federal judges in general. If you think that because a guy works with Latino kids, that this guy is all of a sudden going to give the worst rulings possible to a guy. I, I didn't even say that. All, all I'm doing is giving a rationalization for why sure. Trump could have said that. Well, but this and is... I'm not even saying that he's completely wrong or completely right. Uh, I'm just saying that there are two sides to this, and it's not just as simple as saying that uh, it's something that's like anti-Mexican or anything. Well, I mean, Trump literally like... said it was because of his Mexican heritage. And I think that he was even further asked in that interview if any Muslim could rule on a case of his. And he said probably not as well. So, I mean, Trump makes pretty extreme statements. This is why I'm saying it's hard to play both sides of them. Well, I'm not really uh, – you, you don't feel like I presented a good argument uh, for why judges shouldn't be involved in cases that they could potentially have a conflict of interest in? Yeah, I agree, but your okay. definition of conflict of interest is much, much, much more broad than mine. Okay, well, that's like, reasonable. I think a conflict of interest should be like something direct that you can point out, not well, like, well, yeah. Yeah, yeah um, that's fine. Uh, if that's how you feel, that's how you feel. Um, but for me personally, I, I think it's much more broad. And um, I, I just feel like, uh, again, I, I think like making sure that everything is fair is very important, and that's why I think it should be more broad. And I think it's really up to the judge to a certain extent. I mean, obviously, like, there could be other cases where it could be, like, really important to make sure that this judge doesn't go over a case if they're very, very closely related to the people in charge. But I just feel like, in general, um, people should try to make sure that they're separate from uh, what they're making judgments about. Gotcha. Do you think it was unacceptable, at least insofar as Trump's statements ago, that Trump probably shouldn't have mentioned his Mexican heritage or that Trump shouldn't have mentioned that Muslims can't preside in his case either? Or do you think those were acceptable statements? Uh, I, I don't know. Um, like in terms of like the Mexican heritage, I don't really think that his Mexican heritage had anything to do with it, because as you said before, he's an American. So it's not about him being a Mexican or anything. It's all about being involved in a group. Right, uh, him like this the color of his skin is irrelevant. Gotcha. It uh, it's his like actions. It was for Trump. I think that's why people had so many issues with him is because he kept bringing up the fact that he was a Mexican judge and a Mexican heritage. I, I yeah. think it was like the big issue, like why it's so hard to defend both sides of that. Well, it's not really about defending both sides, and that's what I said at the beginning. It's not about defending both sides of what Trump said. Like, is what Trump said good or wrong? Well, it's thought... about different political opinions being right or wrong and being able to be discussed. That's originally sure. what I said. Oh, sure. I was no, I agree with you. Okay. That, I agree with you that you should be able to discuss. I thought we were specifically—I was specifically discussing why it was so hard 
for Trump's statements to be defended. I think that the conversation can happen. I think there's good conversation to be had there. But I was discussing specifically why I think it was so hard for Trump's statements to be swallowed, not just the conversation in general. And, and I completely understand that. And, and I can even agree with you on that. Uh, I think a lot of times he said a lot of things that were... Uh, I, I wish he had thought about them before he said them, I guess, if that makes sense. Sure. Um, um, I know you said you were pretty limited on okay. time. I've gone over that quite a bit, so... Yeah, well, I, I've had I've had a good time uh, discussing it uh, so far. Uh, absolutely. Gotcha. I, I think that you know you know absolutely a lot of this, and uh, I'd be down to have like more of a in depth discussion. But I just don't really know as much about policy as you do, and I, I'm fully aware of that. And so I, I'm not really willing to have that discussion. I can have the political or uh, the philosophical discussion but not with policy. I'm, I'm sure that you're much more educated in that than I am. Yeah, no, that's fine. And both positions are, are very important. So I appreciate the yeah. conversation, buddy. Well, I, I do too. Uh, do, do you feel like, um, do, do you feel like what I'm saying is reasonable or do you disagree? <laughs> like what, yeah, um, what, what, what do you think? Yeah. I don't know. Um, yeah. My, my issue, so okay. this isn't targeted towards you. Um, sure. My issue is that I feel like there is so much hypocrisy on the right that it really bothers me. So a lot of the people on the right always want to talk about facts versus feels, feels versus reals. And they always make fun of liberals for living in a feeling paradise and never wanting yep. to take into account the facts. And every time I try to get into a discussion, whether it's with Sargon of Akkad, whether it's with Lauren Southern, any right-leaning figure. Um, let me give an example. For Lauren, Lauren had a big discussion on immigration with me. I wanted to talk to her about immigration. Before we had our discussion, I read her book and I read a lot of the research from the leading immigration economist that she cited in her book so that we got into our discussion I was ready to go and have this discussion five minutes after she realized that she was hopelessly lost in the economic debate she said that she just wants to talk about culture and I notice this a lot that when I talk to people who want to defend Trump who advocate for Trump who are Trumples Republicans mm -hmm. right-leaning Brexiters all of these people that anytime they get into a discussion it's never ever ever about policy it's never about how do you feel like what is Trump what is the appropriate response to the sarin gas attacks in Syria? What is Trump's appropriate response to North Korea? Should Trump have pardoned this person? How do you feel about his stance on immigration, on climate change, on tax reform? I don't think he should report, have pardoned right? Sheriff Joe Arpaio, by sure. the way. I think when, that guy should be in jail forever. Sure. When I have all yeah. of these conversations, it seems like they n no right-leaning person ever wants to talk about these things. Instead, it's they, they, they will abdicate the policy position immediately, and they'll go, okay, well, well, I don't want to talk about policy. I just like Trump because he's against PC culture. And it's like, okay, well, this is a lot harder to quantify. Like, based on what you read and where you exist at, like, you can have very different opinions. Like, if you're somebody – like, if you were having this conversation with somebody in, like, Indiana – they would look at yeah. you like you're fucking crazy, right? They'd be like, really? what are you talking about? Left-leaning culture? Like, what? If you were talking to somebody in any rural place, they'd be like, what, like, what do you mean? Like, left-leaning culture? Like, what? what do you... Whereas, like, if you were talking to a Republican that lived in San Francisco, he would look at you and be like, holy shit, yes. Like, oh, my God, the left-leaning shit is, like, fucking oppressive. Like, I know exactly what you mean. Right? Oh, yeah. Like, it's a lot more kind of feelsy. It's a lot more abstract. And in my opinion, it's a lot less important, although it is important. I do agree that, that left-leaning shit is way too heavily represented in a lot of places, and I think that there does need to be more discussion on the right, um, especially with things like stifling free speech. I think the left is fucking horrible at that. When you see people like Shapiro kind of pressured out of going to yeah. universities because I, they can't I, talk. Yeah, I think those are definitely problems. But I also think that like immigration is a big problem that needs to be solved. Tax reform, health care foreign policy. These are huge, big issues that need to be solved. And I would never vote for somebody because I think that they're a little bit less into the PC patrol than, than, than somebody else who doesn't have any good positions on any of these positions. Well, mean? here's here's the way I look at it, man. I, I completely agree. I understand what you're saying. And I think, uh, so to, to respond to your feels over reels thing, mm -hmm. I think that the right wing is like obviously made up of a lot of different people. Oh, you know, you've sure, got like yeah. the, the new right people like uh, Lauren Southerns, I don't really think Sargon of Akkad is part of that, but mm -hmm. uh, other people like that. You have like the more alt-right people, like uh, Richard Spencer. Yeah, I don't even. Uh, I have... stopped using political labels because it's just impossible to keep track yeah. of them. Yeah, well, all, I'm right? just saying, yeah. like, uh, you know, people like that. There are a lot of different, uh, I guess, like factions of people. A lot of people that are like, yeah, I voted for Trump to like make liberals mad. I mean, I, I'm mm -hmm. pretty sure I think that's just as stupid as you do, right? Uh, and, and I understand that. And I, I think that it's not just really about making like a certain person mad or, or not. It's more so about making people uh, 
be able to talk about what they want and not be able to, uh, I guess, like be worried about being censored about that. Because I, I do really think that free speech is a big problem uh, and it's in danger as well. And that's why I, I've spoken out so much about it on my stream. And a lot of people have disagreed with me about that, too. Sure. So, have you actually got just for the record? Because yeah. I saw. Have you actually got suspended okay. for that for the monkey comment or whatever? That was a little racy, that, but like, yeah, that was pretty sad. I don't think you should. That have been wasn't even for it. it. I, I did another one. Uh, it was. Another, I, I've done a lot of them. Uh -huh. It was actually ironic that the one that I got in trouble for wasn't even really that bad. Sure. But um, uh, yeah, I, I didn't really think it was that bad. But uh, that's the way it goes. I, I don't really even have a problem with that. You know, I'm on Twitch's platform. I'll play by their. Yeah, I'll it's a lot. I don't know how long you you've been streaming for quite a while, right? Like yeah, a little bit over a year. Oh, oh shit! Okay, never mind. I thought you were. I've had a YouTube channel uh, for maybe like a couple, few years uh, before that, but I just like moved recently, like moved over to like streaming regularly. Gotcha. Um, about it's a year and a half. Oh, okay. I've been streaming for yeah. almost seven years. It's a lot different than it used to be. It was like the fucking Wild <laughs> West. Like five I know. Or six years I, I ago. wish I was streaming just nine. Well, I, I don't because I'd be banned by now. Sure. But, yeah. People throwing yeah. out N words, F words, like holy oh, shit. Oh like, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's crazy. crazy. That well, that's. that's back then too yeah so i think that's how a lot of people were and that's how a lot of people are like going back to what you're saying that's how a lot of those people are that uh voted for trump and i i can understand how they feel they want to be assholes they want to be how they the way that they used to be and everything but at the same time i really just don't feel like that's uh you know that's that's a good reason to vote against something sure. but i do feel like the culture thing it is a very important issue Mm -hmm. And also, it's like I was like I wasn't really quite old enough, or I didn't get my voting thing, or whatever. But I would have voted for Obama in 2008. I watched the inauguration. I was really hyped for it. You know, I thought we we're gonna, you know, elect this guy. He's gonna end all the wars. He's gonna make weed legal. Everything's gonna be great. And, and none of that stuff happened. And I felt like honestly kind of jaded about that. And in 2012, I uh, I ended up voting for Gary Johnson because I didn't really feel like either one of them were were that great. And I just wanted to change. And um, well, ultimately, like now, uh, do I really regret what I did? I, I don't really know if I regret it because I can't really know what happened. I, I hope, I hope that I, I don't, I don't regret it. But um, we'll have to see. But it, it's, uh, I, I think the culture is is very important. And ultimately, like, I don't really think that Trump being the president is really going to change things any more really than Hillary being the president. And uh, that's based I mean, off of experience with Obama. President's veto power is pretty important in terms of how yeah, many votes you need to get through. Uh, I'm not saying that the president doesn't have any power. I'm just saying that- Also, executive to... orders and whatnot are like pretty big political things as well. Oh, yeah. And yeah. the nominations, I mean, Obama, cabinet members and everything. About that. Yeah, the nominations were also bad. Uh, I, I, I don't know. Um, you know, there's a lot of different factors, but I don't really think that the president plays as big of a factor as a lot of people, uh, I guess, like put him out to be. But I, I whenever I, um, I, I had talked about it on like my, uh, what do you call it, on my Twitter, um, or you, the clip you saw, I, I specifically said I, I was not really prepared to have a policy discussion or a policy debate. Um, and, and I would be willing to in, in the future, absolutely, because I'm, I, you know, I like to look at the numbers and statistics and everything like that. Uh, I'm, I'm sure just as much as you do. And if if it turns out that you're right, then you're right. But um, I, I totally be willing to do that. But I, I I don't want it to seem like I'm backing out of that halfway through. I, I fully knew I wasn't prepared to have a policy discussion with that. Sure, I understand. Yeah, yeah. All right. Well, hey, I appreciate the discussion, buddy. Yeah, for sure, man. Uh, thanks for taking the time out to talk to me. And yeah. hopefully you can see kind of where I'm coming from. And, yeah. and I know that we, we might disagree or whatever. Uh, on, on policy or that you know trump is like uh you know the the judge thing i i think that 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 was definitely pretty contentious but i mean i, I think you can see where i'm coming from and, and i can see where you're coming from too yeah sure thing i appreciate the conversation all right for sure man i'll talk yeah. to you later bye